BCE art is a fantastic subject where students get to create artworks using a wide range of materials and techniques. Pictured on this slide are some paintings, drawings, prints and ceramic work created by VCE students over the past years. VCE art explores the role of art in both contemporary and historical cultures and societies. Students build an understanding of how artists, through their practice and the artworks they produce, communicate their experiences, ideas, values, beliefs and viewpoints. In this subject, students learn to analyse and explore the meanings and messages of artworks. They also explore and trial a wide range of art making materials and techniques in their practical folio. They develop skills in folio development and in the analysis and creation of artworks. VCE art equips students with practical and theoretical skills that enable them to follow pathways into tertiary art education or further training in a broad spectrum of art related careers, such as artist, designer, illustrator, stylist, curator, or ceramicist. Many past students have followed creative courses at the tertiary level, fine art, visual art, arts education, and illustration courses are just some of the related pathway options. Students develop skills in research, analysis, art history, and criticism to interpret and debate the ideas and issues that are raised in artworks. Students are supported to develop their own points of view about art ideas and issues. Through exploration and experimentation, students develop skills in creative, critical, reflective and analytical thinking to explore, develop and refine visual artworks in a range of art forms, such as painting, printmaking, ceramics, digital art making and mixed media. VCE art offers students opportunities for personal development and encourages them to make an ongoing contribution to the culture of their own communities through participation in lifelong art making. Art aims to connect students to their own contemporary cultures and supports them to develop real world skills in analysis and the generation of artworks. If you have any questions about VCE art, feel free to get in touch with me or students can come and visit me in the art rooms. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs McKenzie and I'm here to talk to you about VCE biology. The study of biology explores the diversity of life as it has evolved and changed over time. It considers how living organisms function and interact. It explores the processes of life from the molecular world of the cell to that of the whole organism and examines how life forms maintain and ensure their continuity. If you are curious about how organisms are able to survive, the relationship between organisms, both living and extinct, patterns of inheritance through generations and enjoy conducting experimental investigations, then biology is the subject for you. In unit one, students examine the cell as the structural and functional unit of life from the single celled to the multicellular organism. They learn about the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Students focus on the cell cycle, learning about the growth, replacement and death of cells and the role of stem cells in our bodies. They explore how systems function in plants and animals and consider the role homeostatic mechanisms play in maintaining an animal's internal environment. In Unit 2, students explore reproduction and the transmission of traits from generation to generation. They learn about the process of meiosis, explain the inheritance of characteristics, analyse patterns of inheritance, interpret pedigree charts and predict the outcomes of genetic crosses. Students analyse the advantages of asexual and sexual reproductive strategies. They study the different types of adaptations that enhance an organism's survival explore the interdependences between species in maintaining ecosystems, and they also consider the contributions of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledge and perspectives in understanding the survival of organisms in Australian ecosystems. 
In Unit 3, students delve deeper into cellular processes, explore how the genetic code provides instructions for the synthesis of proteins, and examine the processes and consequences of manipulating the DNA molecule. In Unit 4, they learn how organisms respond to pathogens and acquire immunity. They explore the changes to genetic material over time and the evidence for biological evolution, including human change over time. This slide contains a graphic showing just some of the possible career pathways you could take after studying biology, including, but definitely not limited to, the health and medical sciences, sports science, agriculture, animal and veterinary studies, ecology, species conservation, and science education. VCE biology is a prerequisite for many tertiary degrees. Here are just some of the examples of how past students are using the skills learnt in biology in their future studies. So what does success look like in biology? By studying VCE biology, you will develop many skills, including conducting scientific investigations, presenting and analysing data, reaching evidence-based conclusions, working effectively in a team, reading and summarising scientific texts, conducting independent and collaborative research, and problem solving. Studying VCE biology will help you develop a wide range of skills which form the basis of many university courses and some TAFE courses. If you have any questions, please come and speak with either myself, Miss Woodruff, Miss Cavey, Mrs Osmers, Mr Jew or Mr Cashmore. We look forward to seeing you in biology next year. Oh, hi there, Adam Slater here to talk to you about studying business management uh, for Unit 1 and 2 in your VCE. Uh, the purpose behind studying business management uh, in Australia today is for is to develop a thorough understanding of what it would look like to, to own, to operate, to manage or work in a small business. Uh, business management is not necessarily a prerequisite for any subsequent university qualifications or degree, but it does provide you with great insights into higher education, whether that be in the TAFE sector or uh, at a university. The, the scope of this course will enable you to learn lots about uh, financing, marketing, staffing, uh, the reasons behind or the, the purpose for the existence of business in Australia today. Our students, many students have gone on to higher education, but many have also gone on to operate very successful businesses themselves. One of our current students has been able, or already been able to achieve a position at the University of Western Australia studying commerce and finance for 2021. The success, what success looks like in studying this, this unit will enable students to develop a wide range of skills. So whether that means independent research, teamwork, problem solving, interpreting graphs, data, uh, and just an analysis of the general Australian economy to make sure, to, to enable them to be really uh, valuable employees or really successful business managers or business owners. This unit does have a lot of links to the real world. So regardless of the pathway you choose, business management has applications for anyone going into the workforce at any level. So uh, being able to study this uh, secondary school is an advantage for all students. So I would like to thank you for listening today. Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Chandra and I'm going to talk to you about VCE chemistry. Chemistry is the study of the chemical world around us. It explores the chemical processes that occur on Earth and beyond. As seen on this slide, chemistry involves a lot of experiments and practicals, so it is a very hands-on subject. In Unit 1, students study different types of materials and its specific uses for human endeavour. You get to investigate chemical properties of materials such as salts and nanomaterials and polymers. Did you know that graphene is actually a single layer of carbon atoms and yet it is stronger than steel? These are some things you get to study in, uh, in chemistry. In Unit 2, you get to uh, study the physical and chemical properties of water. You will investigate different ways that scientists use to analyze contaminants in water. For example, scientists use these methods, methods to determine in, if water is safe to drink or not. 
Chemistry can open many career pathways for you, as you can see here. One of the most popular ones is being a food scientist. And I know of chemist whose only job is to taste ice cream and make recommendations to the company about new flavors. You can also see what some of the past and current students at Patterson River have gone on to study or will be studying. If you know any of these students, have a chat with them and they'll be able to tell you a bit more about chemistry. Doing chemistry helps you develop transferable skills, which is commonly known as 21st century skills. Some of these skills mentioned here are practical skills, experimentation skills, research and analysis skills, cognitive skills, and communication skills. You also get to work in groups, so this builds your confidence in working in a team. I would like to finish by saying that chemistry will allow you to form unbiased conclusions on science-based issues. One great example is the information on COVID-19 at the moment. You will get to form your own conclusions after collecting and researching information yourself and not relying on fake news. Chemistry also allows you to be curious, open-minded, and have a respectful look at local and global issues. Chemistry is all around here. Us. And I hope I have said enough to convince you to try this awesome subject next year. Hope to see you then. Thank you for listening. Welcome everyone to the Year 11 Dance Curriculum PowerPoint. Year 11 dance is a performance and theory based subject that provides the opportunity for students to explore the potential of movement as a means of creative expression and communication. The subject is 50% performance based and 50% theory based. Whether you want to study dance after school, either as a professional dancer or at university as a part of an arts degree or education degree, this subject will develop employability skills through the learning activities. It will help you develop planning and organisational skills, self-management skills and confidence, and communication skills and the ability to work well within a team. There are four areas to Year 11 dance. You will develop dance technique through your physical skills and advancing your abilities to execute a diverse range of expressive movements. Composition refers to the choreography side of the subject, where you will build on your own personal movement vocabulary and understanding of choreography. You will do a variety of performances of your own works and of learnt dances from your teacher or guest choreographer, and you will analyse dances and look deeper into the meaning behind them. Overall, if you study this subject in Year 11, you will learn relevant physiology, physiology physiology and approaches to health and well-being and also about the care and maintenance of your body. You will then apply this knowledge through regular and systematic dance classes. Thank you. G'day and welcome to this course counselling video on why you should choose drama for your VCE studies. Drama is enjoyable while being highly practical and creative. In drama, students will explore different processes to devise drama. This subject develops students' creative abilities to devise and perform drama, focusing on individual and collective diverse backgrounds. Drama can allow you to focus on pathways into theatre, film and TV, focusing on acting and direction, performance facilitating and stage, theatre, production and events management. Drama is not a prerequisite for any tertiary studies, however, it develops useful skills for many different career opportunities. By studying drama, students will develop skills in collaboration, organisation, leadership, problem solving, creative thinking and communication. Students will also develop performance and presenting skills along with skills in analysing. The development of these skills will assist in becoming more confident when performing and presenting yourself in the real world. These skills will also help you through interviews where employers look for confidence and the ability to adapt while thinking outside the box. So these are a few reasons why you should choose drama for your 
Year 11 Studies. I hope you consider it when you choose your subjects. Okay, as you can see from the detail on the slides, our literature is one of the English subjects that's offered. It is a standalone subject. It can be taken by itself or in a combination with English and literature. We have students who do both. Um, literature is based on the interpretation and close analysis of plays, short stories, and poetry. And what we really, people really appeal to are good students, people who are at least a B level, B, B plus, A, A plus students, students who enjoy reading, discussing, writing about and creating texts um, in a small interest of class. It does tend to be a year 11 and 12 class combined, um, but it, um, the year 11s tend to learn a huge amount from the year 12s and it works very well as a combined class. Um, I've written here some comments that um, people have made in the past about um, our class, but the skills that we're um, able to develop through literature are um, how to closely study and analyse a text. And you'll find if you do both English and literature, they feed very much into each other. So obviously closely studying and analysing a text will help you greatly in English as well. Uh, you also um, be working on how to express your interpretations confidently in writing, which would also help in English, and also in discussion. It's very much a lot of discussion in literature. We do a lot of class discussion and group discussion. Um, also, we do a range of, um, don't think literature is only about um, old texts, it's also about modern texts and classical texts. We do Shakespeare, we also do a lot of modern um, um, texts as well, and um, sh novels, short stories and poetry are quite modern. Um, we also do a large creative component, so if you're into creative writing, this could well be for you, um, in both year 11 and year 12. Uh, the people who've done literature tend to get very good scores in VCE, and a lot of them have gone on to be university students. And um, we have um, ex-literature students who become journalists, who become teachers, who become editors, script writers, actors, because it works very well with drama as well. Uh, but most of all, people who do literature tend to become lifelong readers, lifelong thinkers, lifelong theatre goers, because that's the type of thing we're doing all the time, reading, thinking, analysing, interpreting, and we try and go to the theatre for the play we're doing if we can. So if you're that type of person that appeals to you, think about joining us in the 2021 literature class. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Miss Clois here to talk to you today about BCE Food Studies. In BCE Food Studies, you get the opportunity to work in practical activities, and in theory classes to develop your food knowledge and your food cooking skills. The emphasis in this class is to lift that knowledge and that skill base higher than it is at the end of our middle school program. So really extending and, and getting much higher level skills. And that is done through both cooking and tasting experiences, through uh, you having the opportunity to design and develop new food products. So they might be developed in response to a particular need, like we might ask you to design something using Indigenous food products. And you'll have the opportunity to link your knowledge of nutrition and health back to food preparation and cooking. So looking at how through better preparation and cooking, we can make our food much healthier. You might want to choose food studies if you are interested in the hospitality or or cooking industry. So if you're interested in being a chef or working in a restaurant, you might be very interested in doing the subject, but it's not limited to people who would like to go into those fields. So also people who are interested in nutrition and in health and in teaching and anything to do with the growing of food or production of food, this is certainly a subject for you as well. In terms of the skills that you will be developing, most importantly, most of the time you are developing those food production skills. Um, in addition, though, there's a lot of research and there's a lot of work involved on developing those skills in learning how to find out information and how to be critical of that information. So we do look a lot at the things like the Australian Dietary Guidelines and how they impact on the types of decisions that we make about food. In terms of uh, the real world applications of food studies, well, throughout your life, you're going to be making decisions about food and you will find that over 
the coming years, those decisions will be really influenced by things like the environment and political systems and the goings on around our world. So we help you to navigate the types of information that we are bombarded with every day when it comes to food. We look at our Australian and the global food systems. That means we have a look at how food goes from being grown somewhere like in a farm to ending up on our plate and the types of processes that are involved in getting it from the farm to our plate, or we call that paddock to plate. We also look at the types of uh, influences that things like the economy might have on food or ethics. So things like the treatment of animals or the treatment of humans in the production of food. So how children might be treated in the production of food. And we also look at the environmental aspects of food. So whether there's an impact from the use of fertilizers or the use of pesticides in the growing of food, the importance of organically grown food versus non-organically grown food, and those broader issues, they're very important in food studies. We also help you to understand many of the messages that we get about food from advertising or from marketing. So we might look at diets like, for instance, the paleo diet and consider whether or not that's an appropriate approach for people to take in terms of health. So as you can see, food is very broad. And if you have any questions and you'd like to get some more information, please, please feel free to drop in and ask, ask me or you could speak to either Mrs. Bales or Mrs. Holden or Ms. Holden as well about uh, food studies and your interest in that area. Thank you, everyone. Hi, guys, I'm Miss Malloy, and I'm here to talk to you about Unit 1 and 2 Geography. Geography helps make sense of an increasingly complex world. If you are interested in pursuing a career in an area that genuinely makes a difference to the world we live in, you should consider geography. Unit one focuses on hazards and disasters. Hazards can include a wide range of situations, all the way from the local level up to global hazards, such as drought, which Australia has been experiencing for quite some time, and infectious diseases like pandemics. This unit investigates how people have responded to specific types of hazards, including attempts to reduce vulnerability to and the impact of hazard events. Unit two looks at tourism. Um, the rapid growth of tourism at all scales requires really careful management to ensure environmentally sustainable and economically viable tourism. Your study in geography can lead to further study and employment in areas such as urban and rural planning and design, uh, sustainability management, environmental engineering, geospatial science, ecotourism, the defence forces, and even outdoor education. Um, in VCU Geography, you will use a range of skills, uh, your investigative skills, you'll collect primary data through observation surveys and go on field work. Um, you'll use interpretive and analytical skills, and you'll use your critical evaluation skills but through evaluating information for its validity and reliability. From investigating to current natural hazards and how people have responded to them, to examining the enormous growth in tourism, topics covered in the four units of geography exa examine some of the biggest issues in the world today. It's a really rich subject and I hope you consider studying geography. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kate Adams, and I'm here to talk to you about studying VCE Health and Human Development. Health and Human Development provides students with the skills and knowledge to make informed decisions about their own health and to recognise the importance of health in society. In undertaking this study, students will be able to actively participate in making appropriate choices that allow for good health and be able to seek appropriate advice. Health and human development students will gain broad understandings of health and wellbeing that reach far beyond the individual. Students learn how important health and wellbeing is to themselves and to families, communities, nations and global society. The career prospects from the subject are broad. In terms of university courses, it leads to courses such as, but not limited to, health science, health promotion, nursing, international studies and aid, nutrition, 
community health research and policy development, humanitarian aid work, allied health practices, education and other types of health professions. VCE Health and Human Development is designed to foster health literacy. Students develop a capacity to respond to health information, advertising and other media messages, enabling them to take appropriate and positive action to support health and wellbeing and manage risks. From undertaking this study, students connect their learning to their lives, communities and world and put strategies into action to promote health and wellbeing in both personal and community contexts. When students leave school, they are able to apply their learning in positive and resilient ways through future changes and challenges. Thank you for listening to me today. Hi, it's Miss Chadwick here and I'm going to speak to you briefly about VC history and reasons why it might be a good choice for you moving forward. In Unit 1 and 2, we study modern history. Unit 1 focuses on what is happening in Europe from the end of the 18th century to 1939. Area Study 1 is all about ideology and conflict, whilst Area Study 2 is about social and cultural change. There is a focus on what happens pre and post World War I, but also on how the world changes during the road to World War II. Not only do we examine how people's lives change in a social and cultural sense, but the rise of different ideologies and leaders, such as fascism and Hitler, communism and Stalin um, during this time, and what that means for the world, uh, but in particular, the people of Germany and Russia. During Unit 2, we focus on the world post-World War II and the changes that occurred. In Area Study 1, we focus on the Cold War and the rising tensions between the USA and the USSR. We look at key events such as the Cuban Missile Crisis, the arms race, the Vietnam War and the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. In Area Study 2, we focus on challenge and change at the time. In particular, um, we'll look at issues including terrorism and the US civil rights movement. Whilst it's not necessary to study VC history to pursue history at a higher level, the skills and content you learn during Units 1 to 4 can be really beneficial. And many students in the past who have studied VC history have gone on to excel in history studies at a higher level. Studying history opens doors up for a number of jobs in, and pathways, including writing, historian, teacher, researcher, museum archivist, and many more. Studying VC history will enhance your skill set and the skills that you learn in history will benefit you not only in the history classroom, but in all your other subjects that are literacy based. So it can be really helpful. The study of history requires you to examine and question why events have happened in the past. It also requires you to look at what is currently happening in the world around us and to ask yourself the following question. Are we learning from past mistakes or are we setting ourselves up to repeat them? Thanks guys. Hi students, welcome to Applied Computing. My name is uh, Mr. McLaughlin. I've been teaching Applied Computing this year, 2019. Previously, it's called uh, Year 11 uh, IT. Um, the Applied Computing course is a, a much improved course. It's four key concepts for us, digital systems, data and information, approaches to problem solving and interactions and impact. Digital systems uh, looks at the hardware and software, how they all work together. I mean, our lives are in control by digital systems. Um, the fact that we are uh, doing this in Microsoft Teams and we, we did a lot of remote learning tells us about that. Data and information. We give the web a lot of information about ourselves. Massive data databases operate out there. We use databases as part of our work to manage data, to make data go from just meaningful, meaningless numbers into information. Approaches to problem solving, how we can solve things relating to hardware and software, proprietary software and software we developed ourselves, and as well as interactions and impact. 
the interactions between the technology that is constantly evolving and the impact on us as uh, end users and, and the human race. Well, why study this subject? Well, IT people get jobs and they get good jobs. And there's a lot of great jobs out there. Uh, top 10 jobs include computer technician. These people working uh, actually on computers and hardware, network management um, at a, a lower level and a higher level, cyber security, web developing, game developing, software development, data security and cloud engineer. And then of course is the internet of things. The internet of things of all the devices that are connected um, without you actually have to do anything. Uh, that is why my car goes along and, and it shares uh, traffic information with all the other road users who are using Google Maps. Now, why will we do this? Um, previous student pathways have some great outcomes. We've had former students that have moved into data analytics and working in the gaming industry. Um, students have moved into network support roles, network security. Uh, student went and worked for Tennis Australia, managing all the databases for tennis players. Um, one's now working over in uh, LA in a gaming environment. So lots of jobs out there for people and, uh, you know, this gives you some real skills. Some of the skills we're going to go through here, we're going to build those problem solving skills around technology. Uh, it builds a lot of competency in those programs used in any workplace. Um, and that is tools uh, that manage data like Excel and Access. Access a bit more high level, but many, many businesses use Excel as a way of spreadsheets, a way of managing uh, their income and budgets. Um, and keeping uh, a track of stock, etc. Well, conclusion, um, real world links here. Well, the world's getting smaller, we know that, and access to technology and the information superhighway, you know, um, you got to get on it. The growth is in cyber security, AI and robotics. Applied computing uses real world data and industry standard database tools, that is access. There's a lot of proprietary ones out there that uh, you know that we don't uh, we, we study but we don't use. The Visual Studio programming packages immerses students in industry standard programming languages. Everything we do here is about uh, giving you a simulation of what life is like inside the IT industry in project management. Well, you've got one project to manage, and that is what subjects you're going to pick. If you've got any questions about uh, uh, applied computing, Year 11. Uh, unit one and two, and indeed software development. Speak to me, Mr. J uh, Mr. McLaughlin, or Mr. Japara, or anybody in the IT area. We're happy to help. Thanks for listening. Uh Welcome to any new Year 10 students who are viewing this PowerPoint as prospective VC Legal Studies students in 2022. Legal Studies is a very engaging and interesting VC subject and is consistently in the statewide top 10 for most popular VC subjects. Students really enjoy this subject because it is so much more than a textbook theory subject. The principles and concepts that you study are directly applicable to the real world. For example, if you're studying the criminal justice system in Unit 1, then you can apply your understanding to contemporary case studies from the media so that you can see and connect the theory in a real world context. For example, on this current slide, that's the Lady of Juris. She sits above the Victorian County and Supreme Courts. The scales represent justice and equality. The sword represents the pursuit for truth. VC subject is a subject that many students choose to do. Some Past students have gone on to become lawyers as solicitors and barristers. Some students have become clerks of the courts. Some work in law firms as paralegals. Some work in the administration of the justice system, such as tip staff, pro notaries and listing masters. But there are many more careers outside the court system. Students from Patterson River in the past who have studied legal studies have gone on to join the Victorian Police Force or the Federal Police Force. Corrections Victoria, Border Protection, protection, customs, juvenile justice officers, electorate officers with local politicians and working in community legal centres. There are a rich pathway of careers if you study legal studies. Legal studies is a literacy based subject. You need to write well, but it also will develop your ability to research and analyse information. It, it develops your skills of advocacy. You need to use verbal communication skills to advocate and justify your points of views. And also it allows you to understand the functional working of our political and court systems. I would encourage any student to seriously consider doing VC legal studies as part of their VC course next year.
Hi everyone, so I'm just going to talk really briefly about music performance and doing it as a VCE subject. There's a lovely photo there of some of our ex-students or a couple of current ones actually just performing. It's a it's a really interesting class, it's called music performance. We really need to think about the name of it and I'm going to show you why. The purpose, to develop your skills as a performer on a musical instrument. So it is recommended, highly, highly encouraged that you are playing an instrument when you do this course. It's not about creating music on a computer uh, and looking at it and being a producer. It is about learning to perform and be a live musician in front of an audience. So to continue on with those purposes, to develop your ability to play in front of an audience, to develop techniques and abilities on your instrument, to work towards goals on your instrument and structure your practice routine so it's relevant to achieving these goals, understanding music theory, and then we'll also look at creating and writing music. It's very relevant to the music industry. Uh, the music industry uh, in this day and age more than ever requires musicians to perform live to earn a living with the reduction of earning uh, possibilities with streaming music. People need to be out there playing and playing live. You need to draw on a range of skills on, on your instrument. You need uh, music theory uh, to be able to listen and analyse music if you are going to look at a teaching pathway. A number of our students have gone on to study music at a tertiary level, including TAFE in university. And a number of students have used their skills to teach from home uh, as part of a, a, one of their own businesses or worked for a music school or agency. And what skills are you going to learn? So solo and group performance. It's going to be a lot of playing, rehearsing uh, and performing. Songwriting, composition, soloing, improvisation, writing music theory, uh, listening to music, uh, analysing that music and then also you're going to have to read um, written music notation. The real world links, everything is relevant. If you're going to do anything with music, you have to be playing. It's all about playing. It's not about looking or listening and just doing those things, you must play. So you're going to be planning rehearsals, creating goals and performing to audience. That's going to be the core of what you do. Um, you're going to be able to understand the content, the performance and the theory so it can be taught to others. So you may look at a pathway in teaching, uh, read, write, understand music. These are all skills that you have to use uh, out there in the music industry. Uh, and finally, the, the theory, um, which then can be used. If you can write your own music, you can then use that for your own um, business or commercial applications, whatever you want to do. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you seriously consider music uh, and music performance. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Cook, and I'm here to talk to you today about outdoor and environmental studies uh, in for VCE for 2021 and 2022. This year, Units 1 and 2, Outdoor Education, is for anyone who loves the outdoors that has some camping experience. So I want you to think about biology mixed with sustainable living in terms of the theory components that we talk about. We do look into environmental ecology, and we learn about how all of our world revolves um, and then also how humans are relying on the world and how we move through the natural world um, as we progress as a society. We do go through on a few camps. So we do go to the Murray River for a few days for a canoe trip. We go to the Great Otway Coastal Walk for a few days um, for a bush hike and then also try and get a couple of day trips in there as well. Also, it ties in that information that we're learning within the classroom. <clears throat> Things you need to know is that this is a fee paying subject. So at VCE level, the cost is around $500 and that is a discussion that you need to have with your parents about moving forward through VCE 1 and 2 for $500 and then also VCE units 3 and 4. That $500 goes towards your trip costs, so you don't have to pay anything for when you go away on the trips. And in year 11 or for VCE units 1 and 2, you are away on trip for roughly 10 days of the year. You don't have any gear, that's completely fine. We as a school provide you with all of your major equipment, so your tents, your stoves, your boards, your boats, your bikes, those types of things. What we ask you to do that if you do sign up for this course that you come in with uh, an enthusiasm for the outdoors, but then also some of your own outdoor red clothing, which is a waterproof jacket, maybe some waterproof pants and, uh, and some hiking boots. So. If you have any other questions, please make sure you come and find me. I live in the Year 7 office, so come and have a chat with me and I can answer anything else you have. Um, questions for Outdoor Ed. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Mr Wakefield. I teach philosophy in year 11 and 12 at Patterson River. Uh, what is philosophy? Philosophy means uh, the love of wisdom. So it's an ancient Greek word. And often when you look at the ancient Greeks as being the, uh, the beginning of at least Western philosophy. So philosophy today, rather than being all things that used to be studied, it's more down to, uh, I suppose, four broad areas. One being metaphysics, so questions like, do we have free will? Does God exist? Uh, epistemology, questions like, how do I know I exist? So Descartes famously said, uh, I think therefore I am, which means all I can know for sure is I exist because I question my own existence. Uh, ethics, things like what is wrong with killing? Where deaths happen all the time, what do some seem as immoral and some justified? And lastly, we look at logic. So we look at questions such as what is truth? Is there such thing that exists? Uh, we look at a lot of these questions through the eyes of past philosophers and we develop our own opinions and ideas based on that. Within philosophy, you learn many different things in terms of skills, ability to solve problems, think critically, develop your comprehension and writing skills. And in terms of vocations, I suppose it's a little bit like something like mathematics or even biology. You're learning skills that you apply to a whole range of different uh, vocations. So when you're doing maths, you don't necessarily want to be a mathematician, you might want to be an economist. And that's the same with philosophy. As you can see, I've noted um, many different um, people that have studied philosophy in many different kind of vocations. People like George Soros, Warren Buffett, who are some of the richest people in the world in business. Uh, Anthony Leggett, who won a Nobel Prize in physics. Even people you may have watched or used their products, someone like Ricky Gervais or the Cullen Brothers for movies and writers, and Peter Thiel, who co-created PayPal. Now, at the very start, I had a statement, become who you are, that was by Friedrich Nietzsche. So as an example of philosophy, Nietzsche argued the best type of life to live was one where you set your own goals uh, away from created ideas from society, friends, family, and your whole life is about overcoming your own weaknesses, but also mastering and setting goals that are very hard to overcome. And the feeling you get from when you actually achieve them is what for him is a good life. So as you can see, it's a variety of different things that we do in philosophy, both in skills and ideas. Um, have a talk to people who have studied philosophy at school that are still here, or come and speak to me if you have any questions. And Hi guys, it's Mr. Jack here, uh, just to talk about Year 11 Physical Education and why I believe you guys should pick it. Um, so the purpose of it is to develop an understanding of the theoretical and practical understanding of the body and physical performance, uh, and then applying this knowledge in a practical context. So learning how the body moves and why it moves, and then being able to put that uh, into a sporting field. Um, in unit one, we look at anatomy. So we look at the skeleton, the muscles, the heart, and the lungs. Um, and then we also look at performance uh, enhancing uh, in the sporting sector. So we're going to look at legal methods. So we're going to go through training methods uh, and ways to uh, be a better athlete. And then we're going to look at the illicit drugs that are used in sport. Uh, and then in unit two, we look at the social and cultural reasons uh, behind sport and participating in sport. We look at illicit drugs and the moral uh, issues surrounding this. And then we look at the behaviour guidelines. So we're going to track our behaviour in terms of physical activity and sedentary behaviours. Uh, students that want to study this tend to go on uh, into train into further education and vocational areas and they look at health sciences, education, recreation, sports development, coaching, or into the health promotion and related courses. Also uh, nursing or anything to do with uh, the health sector there. Um, what success looks like uh, for this is that uh, the study equips them with the appropriate knowledge to develop and maintain their involvement in physical activity, sport and exercise over their lifespan. So becoming healthier, uh, more aware about your health in the future, making you a healthier person in the long terms. Um, how this helps uh, in the long run. So the conclusion of it is 
uh, to engage in physical activity and movement experiences to determine and analyze how the body systems work together to produce movements. Um, but really it's to develop a passion and understanding for physical aspects of health and how to become a lifelong active participant in sport, recreation or exercise. Good afternoon. My name is Mr Van Vliet. I am the Year 11 Physics teacher here at Patterson River Secondary College. You can see the plethora of vocations and further studies that physics actually leads to beyond Year 12. This is just a sample. You'd need to do further study through VCAR in order to find out which subjects exactly need physics as a prerequisite. But there are plenty of jobs straight out of high school where physics would be of benefit. Mainly it's about the fundamentals. The fundamentals are our physical world. A lot of it is about energy and energy transfer, whether that's on a small scale, like trying to get energy out of an atom and how we can use it, through to energy flowing through our world and global warming. As mentioned, physics is a prerequisite for some pure science courses at university, but it also is for those students who are interested uh, a way of understanding what makes the world go round. Unit one, you can see thermodynamics, electricity and matter. And then, as I said, unit two is about a student driven part of the physics course. The first unit is about options where students can choose from one of 12. A few examples there on your screen. Leading into motion and an understanding and analysis of motion leading into an extended practical investigation, which helps and leads towards developing those skills which are transferable between subjects, whether it's between chemistry and physics, English and physics, humanities and physics, or mathematics and physics, logical thinking, analyzing, problem solving, communication, and mathematical skills. So if having a bit of an understanding of the fundamentals is right up your alley, if knowing about the nitty gritties and how things world and what makes the world turn around, then physics might be a subject for you. Hi, my name's Melissa Royale. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about VCE product design and technology. Um, product design and technology is a design based subject um, that would appeal to those students who enjoy practical subjects. Um, they get to plan and uh, make products uh, that are to meet the needs of an end user. Students are encouraged to be creative uh, in their solutions that they plan and they will get to learn about the factors that will influence uh, their designing. Okay, the materials available for students to work with are resistant materials. So we're talking about wood, metal and plastics. Students are encouraged to work with um, computer-aided design, CAD, and computer-aided manufacture, um, which is CAM. Uh, at school at Patterson River, we have a laser cutter, 3D printer, and vinyl cutter. In unit one, the students modify an existing design, so they change it uh, slightly to meet the needs of their end user. Unit two, they uh, work in teams to come up with the design. Again, they're still making a product individually, but the designing process is worked out in the team. Unit three and four, students uh, get to make whatever they decide. They get to choose who the end user is, and work on the production of that product throughout the whole of year 12. Um, students produce a design folio where they record their um, design work and they get to produce the product. And these can be used when students apply for tertiary courses where there's an interview needed uh, for the application process. Um, students develop drawing skills by completing this subject. They learn about the, the characteristics of the materials that they're working with. They develop practical skills with hand tools as well as power tools. 
Um, this is relevant to students who may be interested in pursuing a trade apprenticeship. Uh, so, yeah, tertiary education as well as apprenticeships um, are relevant to this subject. Um, the, no the areas of knowledge that are covered, such as sustainability and the practical skills, are all relevant to many aspects of life. Um, thank you for watching and please come and talk to me if you have any more questions. Hi everybody, I'm Mrs Roberts and I'm here today to briefly talk to you about VC psychology, in particular Year 11 psychology. Look at all the interesting images on this slide. Who wouldn't want to study this fascinating subject? Studying psychology will help you understand human behaviour and mental processes and allow you to better understand how you think, act and feel. So, if you are interested in a deeper understanding of the human condition, you should consider studying psychology. Whether, whether it's a university pathway, a TAFE pathway, job straight out of school, have no idea what I'm going to do at the moment. This day and age, psychology can fit in anywhere. So let's look at the purpose. Unit 1 psychology focuses on how our own behaviour and mental processes are shaped. Topics include the structure and function of the brain, the nervous system, role of neurons, psychological development, mental illness and research methods, just to name a few. And then when we go to Unit 2 psychology, this focuses on how external factors influence behaviour and mental processes. So some of the topics that we look at in Year 11 psychology for Unit 2 um, include visual perception, the structure and function of the eye, visual illusions, everyone's favourite, social influence on behaviour, and again, research methods. Unit 2 also delves heavily into a lot of famous experiments that we analyse. So what is the relevance? The world of psychology is extremely broad and diverse. Possible career pathways include psychologist, psychiatrist, psychotherapist, social worker, teacher, human resources, research roles, media roles, business and management careers. The list is endless. And remember that there are numerous, numerous areas within psychology as well. If you want to become a psychologist, you could become a sports psychologist, forensic, clinical, educational, health, just to name a few. So let's look at success. Psychology is an exciting subject that will allow you to develop a range of inquiry-based skills, including things like practical experimentation, research, analysis, and critical and creative thinking. You need to remember that psychology is a science. So we test different th psychological theories by conducting our own mini experiments, as well as analysing a variety of very famous psychology experiments. So in conclusion, can studying psychology help you in everyday life? Absolutely. It will help you build a wide range of transferable skills. Some of these include people skills, success strategies, personal therapy, problem solving skills, conceptual reasoning, communication skills, and memorization techniques. Who wouldn't want some help when it comes to studying for exams? So as you can see, psychology is a truly fascinating subject. It is a subject that you will no doubt enjoy, as well as have the ability to receive high results in. Please feel free to come and see myself 
Ms Marinucci or Mr Pecua for further clarification if needed. Thank you for your time. BCE Studio Arts is an exciting subject, focusing on the art form of photography. On the slide, you can see some examples of some recent student work from Studio Arts. BCE Studio Arts encourages and supports students to recognise their individual potential as artists and develops their understanding and development of art making. VCE Studio Arts broadens students' understanding of and ability to engage with artworks. Focusing on the medium of photography, both darkroom and digital, students learn to explore potential directions and develop ideas into final artworks. Students also study the role of artists in society, including their relationship with others in the art industry and the presentation and exhibition of artworks in art galleries and exhibition spaces. Students research aspects of the art industry, including the presentation, conservation and marketing of artworks. Studio Arts equips students with the knowledge and skills to pursue an art studio practice and follow tertiary and industry pathways in photography, curation, design, fine art, research and arts education. Many past students have followed creative courses at the tertiary level, including fine art, visual arts, arts education, photography and marketing. Students develop skills in analogue photography and darkroom processing. They learn to express themselves creatively through art making while developing an individual studio process. They practice and refine specialised art making skills and work towards producing finished artworks. Students analyse and draw inspiration from other artists and develop an understanding of historical and cultural contexts in the production and analysis of artworks. Students also extend their understanding of the roles and methods involved in the presentation of artworks in a range of gallery and exhibition spaces. The study offers students opportunities for personal development and encourages them to make an ongoing contribution to society and the culture of their own community through lifelong participation in the making and viewing of artworks. Studio Arts aims to connect students to their own creativity and supports them to develop critical real world skills in analysis and the generation of artworks. If you have any questions about Studio Arts, feel free to get in touch with myself or Mr Johnstone or come and visit us in the art rooms. Welcome to Course Counselling for VCE Systems Engineering. In this course, Unit 1 focuses on mechanical systems and covers topics such as gears, levers, inclined planes, pulleys, etc. You'll complete a project of a mechanical product designed to a set criteria. Unit 2, electrical components such as resistors, switches, relays are studied and a second major project is developed with an integrated electromechanical system. The success criteria for your project is that you must follow the design process to plan, build, adapt and evaluate your major project. Two examples were shown on the first slide. You'll need a variety of skills and processes to uh, cover this, such as working with different materials, wood, plastics, using CAD CAM systems, laser cutters, 3D printers, coding and soldering. Systems engineering will lead you into engineering courses. It will lead into uh, apprenticeships for both electrical and mechanical trades, as well as uh, enabling you to go on to TAFE if you require to do product management or any sort of management degrees. Thank you.
Visual communication design is a fantastic subject exploring the three main fields of design, communication, environmental and industrial. On the slide, you can see some samples of work, including some from recent students. Visual communication design can inform people's decisions about where and how they live and what they buy and consume. This VCE subject supports students to learn how the visual presentation of information can influence people's choices about what they think, what they need, or what they want. Students study various fields of design, including industrial, environmental, and communication, and develop technical drawing skills. Students learn about and develop skills in digital design technologies and design thinking strategies. The study of visual communication design can provide pathways to further training and tertiary study in design and design related studies, including communication, marketing, industrial and fashion design, illustration, architecture and media. This study enables students to develop and apply drawing skills using a range of techniques. Students will learn to apply design thinking and a design process to create visual communications. They will develop skills in applying the design elements, principles, media, materials via both manual and digital methods to develop their own visual language and visual communications. Students will also develop an understanding of how historical, social, cultural, environmental, legal, ethical and contemporary factors influence visual communications. This study offers students the ability to develop critical design thinking skills, which involves the application of creative, critical and reflective techniques and supports skill development in areas beyond design, including science, business, marketing and management. The study provides students with the opportunity to develop informed, critical and discriminating approaches to understanding and using visual communications and nurtures their ability to think creatively about design solutions. If you have any questions about this subject, please feel free to get in touch with either myself or Mr Robinson, or you could come and visit us in one of the arts rooms.